Good afternoon. Let's let's go. Can, is this fun? I have to like I have to like jump on the podium. I'm so tiny. <laughs> um, so good afternoon. Thanks for coming. Um, I know it's a late in the day. It's been a long week, um, but we're really glad that you're here for today's this afternoon session. Um, my name is Karen Boroff, and I am managing consultant health IT policy with Intrepid Ascent. Uh, I would like to uh, welcome you to leveraging network-wide opportunities to manage population health. Um, I am honored to serve as moderator for today's session. And like all of you that are here, I um, am looking forward to uh, the information that we're going we're gonna to hear from our speakers. Uh, just a quick reminder to uh, please complete the evaluation. You can find it in the app um, under session uh, 286. Uh, so our speakers today are Richard Shirey. Uh, he is Senior Vice President and CIO for Hartford Healthcare and is responsible for the strategic development and implementation of information technology for the organization. He has over 30 years experience and has spearheaded long-term strategy development and planned and managed information systems for multiple large healthcare systems. Uh, Isabella Vallette is the ITS team lead at Hartford Healthcare, where she is leading the population health module. She has been associated with the organization since 2009 and served as a clinical nurse leader for five years at the Hartford Hospital. She later joined Hartford Healthcare as a clinical application analyst for three years before taking over as the ITS team lead. She is also a patient educator at Alera Inc., managing referrals of new patients from physicians and educating them regarding the correct use of home PTINR monitors. Please join me in welcoming our speakers. <laughs> Welcome. Thank you. You can be seated. I'm at. Okay. So welcome to leveraging uh, network opportunities to manage population health. I appreciate you coming today. Uh, by virtue of your attendance today, uh, I think you might know that you're eligible for some learning credits, uh, advanced education credits. But in addition to that, you've automatically been enrolled in the Lonely Hearts Club. <laughs> <coughs> you know, four o'clock on Valentine's Day, and here you are with us. <laughs> That's got to say something. So, uh, but I appreciate you coming today, and uh, we're going to uh, try and talk about uh, uh, the leveraging our network opportunities and our pop health experience in terms of what's going on. So, conflict of interest statement. You know, we are employees of Hartford Healthcare. You know, Hartford Healthcare is a client of Innovacer. Innovacer has the sole ownership uh, and rights to their healthcare data platform. No confusion there. Here's our agenda for today and the things that we're going to talk about. Uh, number one, uh, we'll have a little section about us, and then we'll talk about the problem statement and give a little bit of our history, and then we'll demonstrate or, or show our solution illustrated, go through some uh, key outcomes, and some. then we'll try to wrap it up with some insights and some critical success factors, and then we'll have time at the end for uh, question and answer. I think I forgot to do the first thing, which was the start the timer. It's cool to get up here and be timed. <laughs> So I forgot my sunglasses. Man, it is really bright here in the front. So I um, can't see hardly any of you. But if you uh, have opportunities late, I mean, I, th I think you see the microphones. We'll have an opportunity to interact and, and we'll get some question and answer. So you know, it's a small crowd, so let's have some fun. Our learning objectives, as you see here, the, uh, we're going to talk about integrating physicians and the value of that information uh, across our enterprise. We're going to talk about the, the importance of clinical data quality and its impact on our business as we go forward and, and obviously in the population health area. And then finally, we're uh, from a learning objective, we'll talk about the framework that we use for connecting ambulatory sites uh, primarily in different data systems and leveraging that uh, connection to close gaps in care, you know, report on quality performance and then improve overall outcomes. So hopefully we'll achieve that today. <coughs> a little background on Hartford Healthcare. Uh, this is our, our our slide as we go forward. But just to give you a little bit of the history, we uh, are a relatively young system as systems go, about three to three and a half billion dollars in revenue. We have uh, six hospitals today. We're actually in the process, CLN process of acquiring a seventh hospital. Uh, we were late comers to the Epic game. 
Uh, we, uh, the hospital systems that we started with had all scripts at three of our facilities, Meditech at one of our facilities, and then we had uh, Cerner at, a, at our fifth facility in, in the early times. We've acquired a hospital that's a Meditech hospital, and we're in the process of acquiring another hospital that utilizes Cerner as well. We started a project in the Epic game. We uh, signed a pro uh, contract with Epic in 2013 and uh, began the design development process in 2014, uh, rolling out uh, initially our ambulatory solution to our medical group uh, in uh, 2015 in the summer, and then we've subsequently con converted all of our facilities and hospitals. Um, so that's some of our history from a background perspective. You see our size in terms of the number of beds. Uh, hopefully you can see the screen uh, in terms of what's going on here. We're also a fully uh, integrated network, uh, integrated delivery network. We have the behavioral health network, we have a home care network, uh, rehab, senior care, uh, lots of clinics, imaging locations. We uh, recently acquired imaging centers uh, across the state. And you can see by our, our nice little dots everywhere that you know, we populate you know, most of the north from east to west. The hospital that we're acquiring is actually down here in the Bridgeport area. So this area right here is where Yale is, for those of you not familiar with Connecticut. So that's the other major competitor in the state. Epic is a, is a major participant. I mean, I think at one point in time when I was at the Epic user group meeting, that Connecticut has a greater penetration of Epic clients than any other state in the country. And that's because it's a relatively small state. And then when you put uh, the, most of the major medical centers, the Children's Hospital, Yale, us, uh, are all on Epic. And that uh, gives us pretty broad uh, penetration. But in still, you know, we have a lot of physicians who aren't. You know, we have a clinically integrated network. Uh, We'll talk about ICP, which is our primary customer, and that's what we're here to talk about today. So ICP is Integrated Care Partners. Uh, our medical group, in terms of our uh, employed medical group, is about uh, four to 500 physicians. And then we have another 1,500 physicians that are affiliated with us in some way, shape, or form. We have quality affiliates as well as uh, full affiliates. And you know, this is the group of people that you know, we've been targeting. Because we are a relatively new system, you know, the, the issue, you know, we didn't have millions of dollars invested in an electronic data warehouse for the enterprise. And because we were implementing Epic, it gave us that opportunity to say, well, you know, let's see what we can do with the investments we've made. Uh, we want to connect to the patient and we want to connect to physicians and we wanted to use tools that were already in evidence, you know, that are available through Epic to make that happen. And the key was, you know, could we consolidate the data and have all the data that we need within the Epic repository, you know, so that we could do uh, quality measures uh, on them. You know, as I said, we have 500 employed physicians, they're all on Epic, but the affiliated physicians, we have a Connect program. The Connect program uh, has roughly 100 physicians in it today, um, but that still leaves the vast majority of uh, physicians not on Epic. And to the extent that they uh, participate in one of our insurance opportunities from either the ACO or from uh, uh, the MSSP program or any of the other insurance products that, that we're participating in, you know, obviously managing quality is a key aspect of that business. So here you see the highlights on uh, integrated care partners, you know, in terms of uh, where they are throughout the state, uh, the breakdown between specialty providers and uh, primary care providers. And ICP is really our primary customer, or at least uh, for Isabella and I. You know, I'm just your opening act. The, you know, and as all opening acts, the real star comes later. Um, she's the one who has all the knowledge and does all the work. So, <laughs> so and she'll be talking more about the, the other learning opportunities. But here's our primary customer relative to ICP. Uh, you know, in terms of what we're trying to do is create value you know, manage risk, coordinate care, and then increase culture and capabilities. We try to provide services to our affiliated physicians to help them do their quality reporting as well as our uh, employed and owned physicians. And, uh, and with that, um, I'm gonna turn it over to Isabella so that she can uh, take you through the rest of the presentation. Thank you. All right, can everyone hear me well? So in evaluating the barriers to meeting some of the strategic priorities for ICP, specifically around managing risk, coordinating care, and improving quality, 
we found that limited insight into our CIN members' clinical data resulting from fragmented data collection and inconsistencies in data quality pose the greatest challenge. In an ideal world, as Rich mentioned, all of our CIN members would be on the same instance of the same EHR, but we know the reality is that of our CIN practices, um, 102 unique practice locations, they're utilizing 36 different EHRs. And additionally, some of the CIN members who are on the same EHR were on different versions or had implemented unique configuration of that EHR specific to their practice. So we had a lot of variation and discrepancies between um, the data. That lack of visibility meant that care managers were often reaching out to patients to advise them of preventive care services or procedures um, that they've already received. Conversely, a patient may have been missed for outreach if we had missing clinical data or if we didn't receive roster files from CMS or commercial payers that define our patient population due to delays in standardizing and normalizing that data. So that presented a challenge to achieving our strategic goal of providing real-time care management when clinical data was not available at the point of care. Oh, what happened? Sorry? <laughs> I serve a purpose. Thank you. <laughs> so the solution that we identified was integrating clinical and claims data into a single database using standard data formats for our centralized performance platform. We chose the CCDA and pre adjudicated claims uh, data formats because they are standard formats regardless of where the data is collected. CCDAs are coded in extensible markup language or XML so we can get a standardized grouping of information according to clinical context. And additionally, they have the ability to assign unique values to clinical concepts to ensure that all of our systems are speaking the same language regardless of the source of the data. Because CCDAs form the basis of the continuity of care documents that are required for electronic uh, patient information exchange for meaningful use or promoting interoperability today, it was reasonable to assume that all of our practices who are attesting to meaningful use had an EHR that was capable of producing a CCDA. Similarly, we chose pre-adjudicated claims, or 837s, with the assumption that the 837 transaction set was established to meet HIPAA requirements for all claims that were sent electronically, and they required that as of 2012. So we had another reliable way to um, ensure that all of our data would consistently be formatted in the same way. In addition to extracting data through these formats, we've also developed the capability to pull specific data elements that we need for our quality measures or population health workflows via mechanisms like SQL queries or direct database extraction. So this diagram is a very simplified um, version of our ideal solution to develop a centralized performance platform. As you all know, the process to acquire, normalize, benchmark, and report on quality measures for members of a clinically integrated network is complex when they're utilizing different EHRs or, in some cases, non-electronic documentation methods. First, we have to configure their EHRs and practice management systems to collect the appropriate data for quality measures while implementing processes to capture that data as unique and discrete values. We then had to develop a strategy to extract that data, such as creating an interface or exporting the documents. And then once the data is extracted, we have to normalize it into a format that can be interpreted by a centralized performance platform. Only then, once the data reaches that platform, can we display it in a meaningful way in a provider or organizational level dashboard to gain insight regarding our CIN's performance on quality measures. That framework of provider or organization level dashboards allows us to engage our patients to outreach um, at the appropriate time to close gaps in care. <clears throat> so in order to translate that previous slide into action, we had to work under three basic assumptions. The first was that we would have a comprehensive data platform which regularly extracted and ingested data from our ambulatory practices. The second is that we ingested data that met the standards and formats required for evaluation and that it was only the highest quality of data, so we didn't have any inaccuracies or discrepancies in our quality measures and care management workflows. The third and most important assumption is that we would have a single source of truth, 
in our case, the Epic EHR, to simplify data analysis and provide end users with an intuitive platform to drive outreach and care management efforts. So in order to achieve those aims, we partnered with a vendor called Innovacer to extract data from our CAN members, EHRs, and practice management systems represented on the left side of this diagram. <clears throat> Innovacer provided a method by which we could extract CCDAs and 837 claims into a repository where quality assurance was conducted. From there, the data is translated into files that could be in, um, imported into Epic's Caboodle Data Warehouse and Chronicles database for evaluation using Healthy Planet tools. For those who are unfamiliar with Epic or Healthy Planet, Healthy Planet is Epic's population health module that allows us to integrate external data into our native EHR um, for population health management and quality uh, measure workflows. <clears throat> using the Healthy Planet framework, we developed a quality dashboard for our CIN members that provided insight into their own performance on select ACO and commercial quality measures, as well as a leadership dashboard that rolled up performance so that we could monitor performance for our network as a whole. The leadership dashboard also provides the ability to drill down to practice and even physician level data so we can determine where we may need to target specific education and intervention to improve our scores on quality measures. For our CIN members who are not using EPIC, they received a copy of the dashboard through a platform called Healthy Planet Link, which is a web application that extends access of our instance of Epic to anyone with an internet connection. <clears throat> so with the additional data that we got from Innovacer, we developed a new data, e <clears throat> data ecosystem to enhance the data that we had available within Epic already as well as the data that we received from other EPIC organizations using Care Everywhere, and some of the information that we were receiving from commercial payers and CMS related to patient attribution, claims, and provider contract association. Together, all this information forms a comprehensive picture of our patients that ensures our ability to capture data no matter where they receive their care. So as we previously mentioned, none of these dashboards or analytics would be reliable if the quality of our data was insufficient. We have a number of checks and balances in place to prevent bad data from ever entering our system, including uh, tools that are built into Innovacer's data shop platform. Here we can see some records that we received from one of our clinically integrated network um, member EHRs. And you can see that there's a number of blank records, records excuse me, that are not mapped to standard codes or terminology sets. This may be due to incomplete mapping in their EHR or some um, issues with configuration in their EHR. But in either case, these reports act as an alert to allow us to investigate the source of the data so that our um, performance on quality metric is not negatively impacted by negative um, invalid or missing data. <clears throat> To better illustrate how data gaps can impact quality measure performance, consider the following. If we receive a CCD or a claim that contains a free text procedure or a diagnosis without a corresponding code from a standard terminology set, we have no way to evaluate that data to determine if a patient should be included or excluded from a metric or if they can satisfy a quality measure. So let's say we have 60,000 patients in a primary care practice. And of those patients, 3,000 would qualify for inclusion in the quality measure related to pneumococcal vaccination, which requires adults age 65 and older to demonstrate evidence of having received a pneumococcal vaccine. If 490 of those records, or 490 of those patients received a pneumococcal vaccine, but the information was not documented or collected in a discrete manner, we would have no way to know that those patients actually received the care that was required to close that gap in care and we could have a 16 percentage point difference in our performance for that metric, which is pretty significant. Conversely, we may have the opportunity to miss patients that should have been included in the denominator for a particular metric if we don't have the ability to include them and discreetly qualify them for inclusion. <clears throat> this would be the case for records that are missing diagnosis for conditions such as hypercholesterolemia and hyperlipidemia when you're looking at quality measures that evaluate um, stat and prescription for those conditions to prevent 
uh, cardiovascular compromise. <clears throat> So that only, uh, not only puts us at risk from an auditing perspective, as our performance would likely be reflected as better than it actually was because the denominator was smaller, but from a quality perspective, we'd miss opportunities to engage with those patients and perform outreach to patients requiring preventive care if we couldn't easily identify them. In addition to using the data that we've captured for quality reporting and care management workflows, we also can track referral patterns and trends to analyze network leakage and determine where there are opportunities to grow our network to retain patients. In addition to supporting our financial health, patient retention is important for care coordination because we would have access to all of the facilities where they receive their care and therefore access to their data. We can use um, data received from claims and compare that to provider contract association files, which we receive from payers with whom we have value-based contracts and use that data to determine if patients are treated by out-of-network physicians. We can then drill down to the types of services that the patients receive from those out-of-network physicians, including the specialties or diagnoses, and use that information to add services in those areas where we've identified gaps. So although it's a little too early to demonstrate improvement in our quality scores, since we are still bringing patients onto the platform, we now have insight into some of the CIN practices that we've integrated into the platform. As you can see, we've integrated 15 ambulatory EHRs across 34 ambulatory practices since October 2017, and this number may actually be higher since um, these slides are published. We have ingested over 1 million CCDAs and now over 100,000 claims um, since late 2017 and early 2018. We've generated data quality reports in Innovators and Data Platform, which highlight invalid codes and data gaps, which we can then use to um, analyze the quality of our data and determine if there's any discrepancies in the source data. We've also achieved interoperability with Epic's Healthy Planet module. And as I previously mentioned, we've deployed population health dashboards to our MSSP practices through um, Healthy Planet Link. In addition to that, from the operational perspective, we have created a team of dedicated resources to manage our CIN members' quality data through Healthy Planet so they can identify gaps in preventive care services and where there are opportunities to improve quality. That team of practice transformation specialists are responsible for developing relationships with practice managers and physicians and educating them regarding quality measure definitions and how they can enhance their performance through simple alterations in workflows or updates to documentation. We want to make sure that our physicians are armed with all of the knowledge that they need to improve their performance on these quality measures without making any significant changes to their clinical workflows. And we just want to make sure that we're capturing the great care that they're already providing. So the practice transformation specialists that I just mentioned are responsible for determining why our CIN members are not meeting benchmarks for quality measure performance. And if they determine that those benchmarks are not being met because of incomplete documentation, we now have the opportunity to intervene and easily improve performance without um, introducing significant workflow changes. This reflects a shift from what practices historically reported relative to their quality and what the data actually shows. Given the trends in quality data reporting that we've been seeing in recent years, it's unlikely that manual abstraction of um, records is gonna continue to be sufficient to support inclusion or exclusion from metrics. Manual abstraction is also going to be difficult as our patient populations continue to grow. We have to change our provider's mindset from quality is not my job to quality is everyone's job. And by presenting them with actionable data at the point of care is critical in ensuring that um, successful transition from manual abstraction to electronic attestation. It's also helpful to educate providers of available incentives from shared savings programs and other quality programs to help them understand the value and benefits of group reporting over individual reporting. In addition to um, the barrier of physician resistance, additional limitations that we encountered during this initiative were significant variability in clinician workflows and inconsistencies in data collection, which we've already described due to our practices being on different EHRs different versions of the same EHR or having unique configuration that affected data collection workflows. 
Additionally, we found that the rigidity of the data formats that Epic can ingest posed a challenge. Um, it challenged us to consider reformatting some of the data that we've received in order to get it into Healthy Planet. And as everyone knows, any data manipulation presents a risk to data integrity if the source data has the potential to be disrupted. So we don't want to negatively reflect um, data that may be inaccurate because we had to manipulate it to get it into a format that Epic couldn't ingest. So to summarize the factors that were critical to our success, um, we have to leverage information from all practices across our network to identify key opportunities for improvement in um, quality measures and care coordination as a whole. We need to integrate all of our existing systems so that our information is readily available, ideally in an intuitive format in a single location and in a meaningful way for providers at the point of care. It's important to get every provider on the same page regarding the outcomes of their patient population and what they can do to improve their performance and their um, patient's quality of care. And engaging care teams early by providing them with real-time insights on their patient is a critical success factor to um, this program and to other programs that improve quality across the network like ours. All right. Any questions? Snow from uh, Kennery Health Network in uh, Southwest Ohio. Hi. Um, and first of all, congratulations on the success you've had already. It sounds like you guys are about a, six months to a year out in front of us. Um, my question is about um, the practice transformation specialists that you mentioned. Um, I kind of assume that those are employed by the CIN directly, um, but can you kind of give us a sense of um, their size and scope relative to like how many practices they're covering or how they're how big is that team and how, how far are they integrated into mm -hmm. those, those other practices? So right now they're a team of two. Um, because we started this initiative by focusing on our MSSP practices that we were gonna use as essentially a proof of concept to demonstrate the value of integrating um, their data into a single data platform. We have uh, 19 MSSP practices, so they each have about nine, <clears throat> some 10. So, um, as the program grows and we do get more practices on our platform, then I anticipate that number to grow as well, but I can't speak directly for it because, like you said, they are employed by the CIN and we don't have direct oversight for them. I think we also have, <clears throat> I believe we also have around 20 care managers. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, those are others who use the data with our employed physician practices um, in relative to Healthy Planet. Mm -hmm. Spencer Erdman from right down the hall from Richard <laughs> Isabella. I have a question. Seeing that Epic is a member of the Sequoia Project and Carry Quality, are we taking advantage of that HIE to import data on the practices that are so enrolled? Or are we using InnovaceServe, you know, like Athena is in Carry Quality. Are we using Athena through InnovaceServe or are we importing Athena through Carry Quality? Or are we getting enough information? At this point in time, uh, we're getting it through InnovaceServe. Uh, the issue that we have is that we want to connect directly with a practice and, uh, and ingest you know, their uh, legacy data. So it's a lot of historical data that you have to do and that's not what you get you know, through the carry quality network. Um, so that's you know, why the initial contact is all made with, uh, you know, directly with a practice. Other questions? Thank you. Thank Hi, you. I'm Paul. I'm with the University of Mississippi Medical Center. Um, really impressive what you did. I tried to do this about a decade ago <laughs> as another CEO and didn't manage to do it. What's your turnaround time? What's, you know, obviously we'd like that, that feedback when the clinician is with the patient. That's not going to happen under this, but how long does that whole workflow take before they can look in Healthy Planet Link and get their information on the patient? So. Well, Go ahead. It depends on what method we're using to extract their data and the capabilities of their EHR. For some EHRs, we've developed the capability to submit or create a real-time CCD feed, so anytime a patient is discharged or has a specific ADT action, it can generate an HL7 message, which triggers a CCD um, to be sent to Innovacer. There are other EHRs that are not as sophisticated where we have to do manual exports. Some of them um, can only send their CCDs on a weekly basis, so it really depends on the frequency of which we're receiving the CCDs. 
But once they're in Innovator's platform, we can push them directly into Epic. The claims data, there is some manual intervention that we need to do in order to get it into our production database, which is where all of our quality measures um, evaluate the data. They go into um, our data warehouse called Caboodle first, and we have to perform an action called Data Link in order to pull that information from the data warehouse into our production environment. So um, with the claims data, there is a little bit of a longer delay, but with the clinical data, we are able to see that sometimes next day, sometimes a week or so. It really depends on the capabilities of the source EHR. And the dashboard itself in real time. Mm -hmm. right? So you know, based on the data that's available, the dashboard's available real time. Yeah. So it's really a question of the backload and the back feed. Uh, in terms of where the data comes from. So do you, do you have uh, uh, providers that are not participating electronically at all? Uh, Non-participating in Yeah, what? they don't have an EHR, they're all on paper. Well, there are still a few left in, in the, the world. In the CIN, yep. <laughs> <laughs> but they're and not in my MSSP program. Yeah. And are you yeah. allowing them into the CIN? That was an issue we had to. That's an issue that we're actually in getting ready to embrace because, mm -hmm. you know, essentially we need to force them into an electronic world. Right. I mean, physician resistance is actually one of the key issues. I mean, quite frankly, you know, my mantra personally is, is that the age of attestation is over, you know, and, and th they don't particularly like that mantra because, uh, you know, it's used to be and has been for a long time that if they said they did it, it then, it, then it happened, they, they did it. But at the same time, you know, from an audit perspective, as we move forward with electronic health records, you know, have to be in a position to prove it and, and you have to document, you know, for the quality measures and as the quality measure uh, hurdle keeps rising and they keep raising the bar and then we have the electronic you know, quality measures, then you know, how do you attest or, or how do you actually certify that you have, uh, you've met the criteria? Right. And I think that's a changing game. And I, I don't disagree with your statement, I just wanna ask, you know, is, is your ACO board gonna agree with you on that? Yes, they are. Okay. In fact, you know, the, the next step in that game, quite frankly, is you know, do you say that everybody has to be on Epic? I mean, obviously the problem solves itself if you get everybody on Epic. I mean, we could, we could speak to, uh, Isabel could speak to, she's the brains of the outfit, <laughs> you know, she, and could speak to the difference in the quality measures, dashboards, and, and what we use the data for relative to our physicians that are on Epic, even if they're in our Connect program, mm -hmm. versus the physicians that we're still trying to move data from the outside. I mean, it's, it's a tedious process. I mean, it's in, in tedious. It's a difficult process. Mm -hmm. Tedious is the wrong word. Right. You know, it takes a certain amount of time, effort to map their data, mm -hmm. you know, to the data we need. But, you know, if you can't get it on a CCD and if you can't get it on an 837, you know, and, and then you have to do an extract, you know, in order to meet the criteria for an eCQM, you know, how are you going to make that happen? And are and you uh, offering Epic Community Connect to your CIN? Oh, we yes. offer it freely to everybody. Mm -hmm. Not freely. We well, offer it, uh, <laughs> it's available <laughs> to everyone. You know, and, and actually, yes, it's available to everyone in the SIN. Okay, thank you. Sure. Other questions? Going once. <laughs> then we start to dance. <laughs> thank you. All right. Thank you very much. Thanks for coming. Happy Valentine's Day. <laughs>